Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on recordings for the GP2 multifunction program. This tutorial is from the series Introduction to the GP2 Program Editor. I'm going to give you an overview of recordings, the different recording types and how to create and edit them, and then I'll show you how to use the simulator to test your program is working. Okay, so this and the following tutorials are going to build on the programs that have been generated in the previous tutorial. Um, but uh, if you are jumping straight to the tutorial and haven't done those, that's not a problem. You will just have to import the program and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the program that is currently in the simulator. So to do that you can see I'm already connected to the simulator. If you need to find out how to do that, please refer to the relevant tutorial on creating a GP2 simulator connection. But assuming you're connected already, let's go to the program window. We can see our program already exists from tutorial 2. What we're going to do now is we're going to change the program. So for the benefit of those of you that are need to import the tutorial program because you have something else over here, the way you do that is you can click on the edit button and you select import program. You then navigate to your Delta Link installation folder which will be in the program files, Delta T and Delta Link 3.0. You then click on samples and GP2 multifunction program and there you'll see a list of the tutorial programs. This one is tutorial 3 and it's based on tutorial 2's program so we'll select tutorial 2 and click open and there we go it's imported the same program. To give us a little more space to work here I'm going to minimize the info panel and you can do that by clicking this little arrow. You click there again to expand it. So what are recordings? Recordings are used to record or log measurements. You can either record the individual reading at a fixed rate or with some prior processing. So for example you can record um, the speed measurement in its raw format or you could record the average of that speed measurement. A change from the previous GP1 and DL6 loggers is that in the GP2 you can now record at multiple different recording rates. So I could create multiple different recordings in the list over here um, and they could all be recording at different rates. There's also no limit to how many recording regimes you could you could add into this list. So you can really just let your imagination run wild and achieve what it is you want to achieve. Next we're going to look at the different recording types. So we click on the menu here. Um, there are six different recording types. Individual readings, as the name suggests, takes the measurement value as it is and records it. The statistics recording type allows you to record a few statistics of, of a measurement such as the average, minimum, maximum, etc. You can define the sample and recording rates of the statistical recording. Total and integral recording types allow you to totalize or integrate a measurement over a specified period and again at a specified sample rate. Wind recording type provide the means to record wind in various specialized ways. For example, you record a wind rose or the maximum wind gust of wind. Finally, Condition recording allows you to re conditionally record something based on a condition. For example, you'd only record soil temperature when it is below 10 degrees C. A program has what is called a default recording. This means that any new measurement that is added to the program will automatically get added to the default recording. So as you can see here, the measurements we've added to this program have already automatically been added to this individual recording regime. This can be changed by right-clicking on the recording and deselecting default recording. This will now stop any new measurements being added to the default well to the individual recording. This can then again be enabled. Please also note that if you change the name of your measurements, you will need to reselect them in the recording to avoid program validation errors. So let's program this and check if it's working. Before we go ahead and program this to the simulator, I would like to point you at the help for the simulator which has a couple of conventions that are required for the simulator to operate correctly. These include uh, naming conventions for your measurements uh, and other items in your program. So for example, I've named my uh, solar irradiation sensor total to indicate to the simulator that I would like a totalized value there. And, e and equally for air temperature, I've indicated I want air temperature as opposed to soil temperature. Okay, so to, to program this, all we need to do is click Apply. Give it a moment and it's, program, it's now programmed. Next, what we need to do is set the logger running. So we click on the logger window and we click the Start button 
that will start logging. You'll, you'll see the status has changed to logging. We can now click on the data set view, click refresh, and as you can see we have a whole load of data that is now being logged by the, by the simulator. So in the background the simulator is currently running and is generating more and more data at an accelerated rate. This is really useful for being able to test your programs over a season or months or week. If I hit refresh you'll see a whole lot of extra data. So somewhere on the screen you'll see this window pop up which is the simulator window and the time and date in values over here show you at the rate at which it's busy recording. We can increase this rate by moving the dot in these radio buttons. If we slow it down, go back to our data set, hit refresh, you'll see we've now collected a whole load of data. Looking at the soil moisture, we can see interestingly that our soil moisture has suddenly gone up in various locations. This is probably due to some rain. So let's add a range gauge sensor and record that and uh, have a look at the values. So first, before we do that, to be able to edit the program, we need to go back to the logger window, stop the recording by pressing the stop button, and delete all the records. Go back to the program tab, and now we're going to quickly add a rain gauge sensor. So if we go to rainfall and add a RG2, you'll see it's automatically been added to the individual recordings. So let's record that at the one hourly interval, but let's also record a daily total. So let's add a total recording, give it a more meaningful name. Set its recording rate to once a day. Sample rate of once every 10 minutes is fine. And the actual recording we want to use is rain, the actual measurement rather. And before we program that, let's record a couple of more interesting charts of the wind recordings. So let's add wind. And um, once an hour is fine. So now we need to select the two measurements. You'll note the little yellow star indicates the preferred measurement, as it's detected that is a direction measurement, and likewise with speed. Then here's a list of recording options for wind. There's quite a comprehensive list. I'm only going to select out a few options. I want to record the class wind rows, and I'd also like to record the direction average standard deviation we click OK. So let's apply that to our program. Well, before we do that, actually, we now no longer need direction and speed as individual readings. So let's go in here and remove speed and direction. Click Apply. Go to the logger window, start recording. And now I had slowed down my recording, so let's speed that up nicely. Click back on your data, so have a look at the data. Let it generate a bit of data. There we go, so we can see a couple of rainfall events. So if you scroll down, here you can see rain once an hour and the total rain for each day. And right at the bottom here you can see the wind class roses. And of course you can see that the rainfall is conveniently tying up with the rise in soil moisture. So that pretty much concludes this tutorial. I recommend you go and have a look at the Delta Link help uh, for the other recording types. Why not try and add a few different recording types of your own? Thank you for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you found it informative. And please have a look at the other tutorials in this series. Thank you for your time and please visit our website at www.deltat.co.uk.